All right, so the first thing we're going to do is uh, get a couple of functions here. f of x is equal to 3x minus 4, so a nice, easy, linear function. And then g of x, let's make it another nice, easy, linear function, negative 2x plus 5. And we want to um, find the operation result and state the domain. All right, so I'm going to do kind of several, same two functions, I'm going to do several options or several operations with those. you guys a little bit cool this off I know it's hot in here all right so the first operation f plus g of x which is just adding the two functions together simple really easy thing 3x minus 4 plus negative 2x plus 5 put the like terms together there's nothing more to it than that so that'd be x plus 1 that's what the function operation results in. The domain of that. Well, when you're thinking about domain, the red flags that can exist are x is in the, in the denominator, because remember, can't divide by zero. So if there's an x in the denominator, there's restricted values. We talked about those in uh, the rational uh, equations and rational expressions sections that we talked about. Uh, and then square roots or even indices on roots like a fourth root, a sixth root. Those, remember, we had to have positive results. Do either of those show up in this problem? No. So if there's no red flags that show up, then the domain is going to be all real numbers. And we can just abbreviate it like that. All real hashtags, I mean all real numbers out of that. That's a number symbol. Sure. Why not? As long as you know what it means. And I can decipher what it means. All right. So subtraction of those two. Uh, remember, if you got to be careful. It's, make sure it's in the order that it, they've written it. So it's f minus g. So 3x minus 4 minus negative 2x plus 5. Uh, makes a large difference if you don't put it in the right order. Uh, because 3x minus negative 2 would be 5x. And then negative 4 minus 5 would be negative 9. And that would be our function operation. I would say the easiest of the two, or the operations here, are addition and subtraction. Uh, what would be the domain? Are there any red flags on this one? The red flags, I mean, are there any X's in the denominator? No. Are there any square roots, fourth roots, fifth, six roots, anything like that? No. So this would be all real numbers. Domain and then the function operation. So pretty easy when it's addition subtraction. You just add and subtract like terms. Multiplication. 3x minus 4 times negative 2x plus 5. Depending on who you have for algebra 1, if, you know, FOIL method might be the, the way that you go about doing that distributive property. Is what I call that. That's the same thing. Distribute, that'd be negative 6x squared plus 15x plus 8x minus 20. And then simplify from there. You have negative 6x squared plus 23x minus 20. And that's our multiplication function. Domain, are there any red flags on this one? 
question by red flags. I mean, X is in the denominator or square roots, fourth roots, sixth roots, any even roots. Uh, that's a that's a squared, not a root. That's a, an exponent. Exponents don't have a problem. It's the roots that have a problem. Still all real numbers on this one. Because it doesn't have any roots, doesn't have any X's in the denominator. So still all real numbers on the domain. Now let's get to the more interesting problem, the division operation. It is. It is F divided by G of X. It is exactly what the way it's written there, F over G. So you take 3x minus 4 over negative 2x plus 5. If you uh, remember from the rational expressions sections, we try to simplify that by factoring, if at all possible. But neither of those factors, so there's no simplification of that at all. But you would need to look for that, if, if at all possible. Um, so this is our operation, but our domain on this one do we have any x's in the denominator? Why, yes, we do. We have negative 2x plus 5. So we've got to work with that and find out what x value would make that a 0. So remember from that, the rational expressions uh, sections that we've done, you've got to set the denominator equal to 0 and solve it. And that's going to tell you what x can't be. Okay, so solving that. Negative 2x equals negative 5. So x cannot be 5 over 2. So the domain is all x is as long as x does not equal 5 over 2. It's every other number in the world except for that one. So the, that notation is called set notation. It's a curly brace, an x, and then a straight up and down bar. And the way you read that is x such that and then the restriction here, x is not equal to 5 over 2. So whatever x cannot be goes there. So the domain is all the x's in the world except for 5 over 2. Because 5 over 2 would give us a 0 in the denominator. And we cannot divide by 0. That's an undefined operation. So that's why we're finding that uh, restriction on the domain. Okay. Bless you. All right. Let's look at let's look at another set of functions. We'll call it example B. And let's do f of x is 6x and then g of x. And let's put it into the chapter 6 sort of the world where we have a rational exponent, x to the 3 fourths power. Yeah, we're going to do each operation here uh, with this one. So uh, before we get started with that, let's look at restrictions on each individual piece. Are there any restrictions on f of x for domain? No, there's no x's in the denominator. That's not a, a, a root that's going on there. So that's, that's all real numbers. On g of x, there's a 3 fourths power. Does that create a restriction? What does it do? Y'all said the domain of this one is all real numbers. This one, it would be x as long as x is greater than or equal to zero would be the domain on that one. Because it has an even denominator on the rational exponent. If that's an odd denominator, like a one-third power or two-thirds power, then there's no restriction. It has to be an even denominator. Remember, that's the ones we had to do the plus or minus with when we were simplifying uh, back in the first couple of sections. Uh, that's that's where that's coming in from. Okay. All right. Now, let's do the addition, F plus G. Believe it or not, this is even easier because if I'm adding 6X plus X to the 3 fourths, are those like terms? Does anybody want to disagree with him? No. They should, because they're not like terms. You're changing your answer? Okay. Uh, you picked the, that, the wrong side. Uh, so this one is 6x. The other one has a different exponent, so they're not the same 
They're not like terms. So there's nothing to do. You can't even put them together. But the domain, because this is now part of the problem, then the more restrictive domain is the one for the whole problem. So the domain X has got to be greater than or equal to zero is the domain for that addition problem. It doesn't matter that this one had all real numbers. This guy has a restriction. So he, the person that has the most restrictions, it's kind of like a three-legged race. You ever done that where they tie your legs together? If one person is really slow and the other person's fast, who's going to dictate how fast you go? The slow person, right? This one has the most, it's because they have a restriction. They're slower, right? So they're going to tell you, you know, you can't go faster. It's like a one lane road. If the slow car gets in front, they kind of decide what everybody else is going to do behind them. They can't, you can't go past them. Same idea here. Well, one lane, one lane road, you, you don't want to jump off the road there. With the subtraction, what does it change about the problem? Just a subtraction symbol in the middle. Does the domain change? Which one still rules the roost as far as domain goes? Be the one that has the most restrictions again. Whoever has the most restrictions decides what's happening. That is the way it's going to go. If we do the multiplication, and I'll just write it this way, what does that turn into? 6 times x to the what? This is x to the first. What's the rule for exponents there? Add them. So 1 plus 3 fourths would be 4 over 4 plus 3 over 4 would be 7 over 4. So there is the, the multiplication up part. What about the domain? Looking at the domain, what's the denominator of that exponent? Still even, so that means x's have to be what? Greater than or equal to zero. Because it's still got the even denominator on the rational exponent. It's a different exponent now. It's not three-fourths anymore. It's seven-fourths, but the four on the denominator is what makes the difference out of that. Now let's look at the division and see what... See your if or what it changes. So 6x over x to the 3 fourths. Well, what's the rule for exponents there? Well, before we even do that, subtract, right? So 1 minus 3 fourths would be x to the 1 fourth. But. I know it's going to be something with zero. I know this is not in a denominator, but it came from a denominator. So I know this has to be greater than zero or greater than or equal to, but because it came from a denominator, what other number can this not be? X can't be what? In, this, in the unsimplified version. Zero. It can't be zero. So instead of greater than or equal to, like we've had on the others, it's just greater than. So there's a kind of an exceptional one. Because the unsimplified version, so you've got to look at your domain on the where did it come from kind of idea. That's kind of, well, you know, here. It started out as that. That right there tells us O X can't be zero. Here, when we see the simplified version, that doesn't necessarily show us that. So we've got to look at the unsimplified version first when we think about domain. On the division part, on the addition, subtraction, multiplication, 
you really don't have to. But only on the division part do you need to look at that first. Look at the unsimplified version of that. Okay. All right. Let's do, uh, let's flip it over and do G divided by F. Same two functions. So X to the 3 fourths goes on top and 6X goes on the bottom. That simplifies to be what? Well, does it simplify? Well, subtracting those, that'd be 1 over 6x to the negative 1 fourth, right? If you subtract those. Because there's a 1 in front of that x, 1 over 6, that's where that's coming from. But then 3 fourths minus 1 is negative 1 fourth. You could write that as 1 over 6x to the 1 fourth if you wanted to. That's the same thing. Move that, that x to the 1 fourth to the bottom to change it to a positive exponent. No, because it's a negative exponent, not a negative inside of the root. It's a negative exponent. If it were like a negative four to the to the one fourth power, then yeah, then you could do something like that. Because it's an exponent, you can't do that. Domain though. We still got an X in the denominator, so we know it's something to zero. Can it be equal to zero? No, because the fourth root of zero is zero, right? Zero times six is zero, and we can't have a zero in the denominator. Can it be anything smaller than zero, like a negative number? Can we take the fourth root of a negative number? Kind of goes back to what Trevor was saying about the I and stuff like that. So that, that can't happen. So it only can be positive numbers. So that's, that's our domain. X is greater than zero. The division really is where most of the work for domain is going to happen. You're not going to see as much uh, in the rest of it as you would with, uh, with the division. Okay. Look at example C. Let's say this is our f of x function, negative 2x to the 2 thirds, and g of x is... 7x to the 2 thirds. So both both x's to the 2 thirds. Let's think, let's kind of think of what, like we did in the last problem. What's the domain of the original problem? What's the domain of f? Well, I see an x to the 2 thirds, so I got a rational exponent. Are there any restrictions on that rational exponent? Why not? Why are there not on this one and there were on the previous problem? What's special about it? The three in the denominator. It's an odd index. So that means there's no restriction on it. If it's an even index, that's when it's got to be greater than or equal to zero. If it's an odd denominator on the fraction, then it doesn't have any restric restrictions. So all real numbers. So that would mean this one would be the same. Is that thunder I heard? Did I hear it again? And it's not All right, let's do uh, let's do the addition because are these like terms? Negative 2x to the 2 thirds plus 7x to the 2 thirds. Are they like terms? Yeah, I got the same variable with the same exponent. So they are like terms. So I can put them together. Negative 2 plus 7 would be 5x to the 2 thirds. Domain, all real numbers. There with my numbers. 
Subtraction would work the same way. If we did f minus g of x, negative 2x to the 2 thirds, minus 7x to the 2 thirds. Two minuses, so that'd be negative 9x to the 2 thirds. Domain is all real numbers again. Multiplication, f times g of x, so that's negative 2x to the 2 thirds times 7x to the 2 thirds. That's negative 14x to the what? 2 thirds plus 2 thirds would be 4 thirds. Yay, not too difficult. But, what's the domain? All real numbers. When there are no restrictions on the original problems, there's not going to be very much restriction on the results of our operations. When we do the division, though, That simplifies, right? To just be negative two sevenths. There's not even an X in the simplified version of it. But the domain, is it all real numbers? Look at the unsimplified version. What's in the denominator? An X. So we can't divide by what number? Zero. So X cannot be zero. The exponent here has got a two-thirds. It's got a, an odd index, so it doesn't really matter as far as that goes. But because it's an X in the denominator, X cannot be zero from our unsimplified version of that. So you got to look at that and be careful. All right. Okay, so function operations and domains associated with those. They don't get too complicated with those in this section. Uh, they don't get too complicated with the composition either. We're going to look at a couple of those and, and go on to inverses. So, All right, let's look at same section, function composition. This is the, the notation that they'll use. And then you read this F composed with G. That's how that's read. It's a little circle. It's not the letter O. It's F, little circle floating up above the line there, and then a G of X. So it's taking two functions. What it really means is you take the second one, Get that function and put it into the first one as x. You take this function and replace x in the f function with it. Is what it means to do. Now, I'll show you on this example. I think it'll make sense what's going on. So if we've got f of x is 6x plus 8, and g of x is negative 2x plus 10. Couple pretty simple ones to start off with. And we want to do the composition of those two functions. F composed with G of X. What that means is I'm going to take the G of X function and I'm going to put it into the F of X function as X. Whatever's listed second goes into the first one. Is the way that works. What it's really doing is taking the y values of the second function and making them the domain of the first function. Is what that's doing. Taking the y values of the second one and making them the x values of the first one. Is what that means. 
not under under form or under. Me too. And then we could simplify that, obviously, to be negative 12x plus 60 plus 8, which would be negative 12x plus 68. That's F composed with G. What would the domain of that be? Would there be any restrictions on that domain? Is there any x's in the denominator? No. Any rational exponents or roots? No. So the domain would be all real numbers. Now, F compose G of X. Let's do that one first. Now, looking at this one, the first one, F of X, has a little weird thing in it. What does 4X to the negative 1 really mean? What's another way of writing that? got a negative exponent on the x, right? So to make it a positive exponent, what would you do with it? Move it to the bottom. So it's really 4 over x. 4 over x. That's what that really is. So what's the domain of f of x? x cannot be what? Can't be 0. Okay. Are there any restrictions on g of x? No, no x is in the denominator, no roots or anything there. So f has a restriction on it. So that's gonna that should affect when we do the composition of this. It should affect our our, our problem because there's a restriction on the f of x. So when we do f composed with g, that means we're picking up which one to put into the other one. We're taking g and we're putting it into f. So that's four over. 5x minus 2. Can that be simplified? Ma'am? I'm putting this into the place of x there. I'm replacing that x completely with whatever g of x is equal to. That, that clear up what you did. All right. Now, look to see if you can simplify it. You can on this one. But we do need to find the domain. What is the what's the restriction on the domain? Well, it would be where the denominator gives it gives us zero. So if we set 5x minus 2 equal to 0 and solve it, plus 2, 5x equals 2. So x cannot be 2 fifths. That's our domain for that composition because that's where the denominator was equal to zero. If we take the same two functions and do the other direction of composition, do F, G composed with F, that means we're... Caroline? Hmm. No, because you're doing the domain for the composition there, not for just f of x, but uh, for the composition there. Because we replace that x with a whole other function, that's why you don't worry about it on that on this one. We may have to worry about it on this direction though, because we don't because something else happens with it. It just looks different. G composed with f means we're taking f and replacing x in the other problem. So instead of 5x minus 2, we have 5 times 4 over x minus 2. So I'm replacing the x in the g of x function 
with what f of x was equal to. And I'm using this version of it because then I don't have to deal with the negative exponent. That's the reason I'm using that. Okay. Now, distribute the 5 here. So 5 times 4 would be 20 over x minus 2. What's the only thing x cannot be? Zero, because that's the part that's going to mess up the denominator. There's our domain. And that's where, Caroline, kind of tag off what you were asking. Here, this that restriction shows up. It doesn't show up in this one because we replaced the x with something else. That's what happened. They're not going to get too rough with you on compositions or operations in this section. It's really more of an intro to that kind of stuff. We go a little deeper with it in college algebra. It's a much more complex problems to deal with. You're not getting too complex a problem to deal with in, in algebra two. Nothing like what you'll get in college algebra. Not that they get incredibly hard in there either, but just keeping that in mind. All right, so let's look at section six four today, inverse functions. Inverse functions swap the domain and range. Domain being x, range being y. It's really raining out there. It's awesome. I wonder if it's cooler out there. I'm like, you know, I'll, I'll, yeah, I hope so. Too late. It's matter now. All right. So inverse functions swap the domain and the range. They swap x and y. So that's going to be an important, important thing when we go to find the inverse function. We're going to swap the domain and the range. We're going to swap x and y. So if we're going to find the inverse, we'll start with this function. f of x is equal to 3x plus 4. If we want to find the inverse of that, f of x is the same thing as what? What's that represent? X represents X. F of X would represent Y. It's the same thing as Y. So really, if you wanted to start out writing it like this, that would be a good idea. Because if we're going to find the inverse, we're going to swap the domain and the range. We're going to swap X and Y. So that this turns into X equals 3Y plus 4. Then... To get the inverse function, we want to solve that for y again. So we're going to take this new equation and resolve it for y. Okay? Solve for y. So I would subtract 4. It's x minus 4 is equal to 3y. Divide by 3. Everybody gets divided by 3, so that's 1 third x minus four-thirds equals y. That's the inverse. Inverse notation. Now, this is where the function notation comes back. We started out with f of x. Once we've got y back by itself again, we're going to go f inverse of x, which is f, a little negative one exponent of x is equal to one-third x Handwriting is atrocious today. Minus 4 over 3. I'm telling I didn't write anything over the week. So this is inverse notation. Now, what you'll notice, uh, if you were to graph both of these on uh, the graphing calculator, if I graphed 3x plus 4, and then I graphed that 1 third x minus 4 over 3. 
And then I'm going to graph one more equation. I'm going to graph y equals x. Here's the original. This one is the inverse that I found. And then coming up here through the middle is the y equals x line. What happens here is they reflect across the y equals x line. If I took this point, it would reflect down to here. It matches up like a mirror. Like that y equals x line is a mirror. So you could tell if two functions were inverses of one another by graphing them both and see if they reflect across the y equals x line. Like these do. And look where they're crossing. They're crossing on the y equals x line. That's a good clue that they're inverses of one another. So when you find an inverse, you could check it by graphing them and seeing if they're, they reflect across the y equals x line. That's an important uh, checking tool that you could use. Okay, Let's look at another function. Let's find the inverse of f of x is equal to x squared when x is greater than or equal to zero. Now, this part over here is the domain of the original function. It's important as far as whether or not you can find the inverse function because if we graphed just y equals x squared, what does that look like? y equals x squared, just the normal y equals x squared. It's a parabola, right? It normally looks like that. If we put this restriction on it, that it's only the x values that are greater than zero, it cuts off this side to where we only have one side of that. The reason it, that it needs to do that is because if we find the inverse of that function, we want the inverse to be a function. And to, pa to be a function, what test do you have to pass? Does anybody remember? The graph has to pass what test? Not, not symmetry. These are symmetric, but not symmetry. Vertical line test. Y'all remember that? That the, the test is something is a function. It has to pass a vertical line test. Here's another test that can help you to test if a function can have an inverse function. Uh, let me write that down. So, if a function has an inverse function. It can pass the horizontal line test. The horizontal line test works just like the vertical line test. I have to be able to place a horizontal line and it only touch in one spot anywhere I place it. If I had the other half of this parabola here, that would fail the horizontal line test. And which would mean our function inverse would not be a function because it fails the horizontal line test. So when you flipped it over, it would fail the vertical line test. What would happen? Okay, so horizontal line test, that's the reason we need this x is greater than or equal to zero. They're going to give that to you. And that's just going to help you know, okay, I'm only dealing with half a parabola here when I look at the graph. So when you check this by graphing, you'll be able to look at it and say, okay, I only need to look at this half of it. Because that's the half that matters. Because they told me x is greater than or equal to zero. So let's find the inverse of that using algebra. So y equals x squared. Inverses do what? Swap x and y. Now, how do we get y by itself? Square root. But if I use the square root, I have to do plus or minus, right? Which side of that do I need? Why the positive side, Caroline? That's exactly right. Because of this, it says x is greater than or equal to zero. That's the positive side of that. So on the inverse function, I only use the positive side. Had they told me x is less than or equal to zero here, I would have used the negative side of this square root. Okay. So that F inverse 
of x would equal the square root of x, just positive square root of x. So when I graph that, if I want to check this by graphing, I would graph x squared and then the square root of x. Now I've got to remember that on this blue one, I only look at the, sec the right hand side of it. So this piece and this red piece. Do they reflect across the y equals x line? Yeah, it looks very, very easy to tell that they do on that one. Okay. So crossing the y equals x line and reflecting across them is, is what inverses do. Okay. Why are there no restrictions on this one? Okay. Has more to do with the three being odd than it does. The 27 really doesn't mean anything. It's the three on the X part that, that matters. Because what's the what's the opposite of cubing something? Like in the cube group, right? That's that's the opposite of that. So taking a cube root, there are no restrictions on a cube root. We can take cube root of negative numbers and things. So that's that's why there's no x has got to be greater than a certain amount on this problem. When there was there was that on the the one with the square root or squared. So let's find the inverse. Swap x and y. What's the next step? How do I get y by itself again? What's not a y on the side y is on? 1 over 27. How do I get rid of 1 over 27? Divide by it or multiply by the reciprocal, which would be 27. So that's 27x is equal to y to the third. And then how do I undo cubing? Take a cube root or the one-third power, whichever one you want to use. There's the same thing. Do I need to put a plus or minus in front of that? When do I put a plus or minus in front of it? When the index is what? Even. Only if that's like a fourth root or a sixth root or something like that do I need to put a plus or minus in front of it. I don't need that on this one. So that's going to get me, what's the cube root of 27? 3. So F inverse of X is 3 cube root of X or 3x to the one-third. Either of those ways of writing that would be fine. I would accept both ways. Since we're dealing with rational exponents, could be done as well. It gets us the inverses of that. Finding these inverses is going to help us when we solve equations Thursday. We're going to solve equations in Chapter 6. If you can do the, if you can find inverse functions, solving equations is the same idea. It's just you're getting a number instead of f of x, f inverse of x equals something. You're getting a y equals a number or x equals a number out of it. Okay. It's through inverse operations and things. All right, let's do one more and we're done for the day. H of x, two x to the fifth plus 3. Let's find the inverse. Swap x and y.
Now, what do I do? Can't do that yet. Got to subtract three first to get the, the Y stuff by itself. So that's X minus three, two Y to the fifth. Now you can divide by two. That's one half X minus three over two equals Y to the fifth. How do I get rid of that fifth power? Fifth root, yeah. Or one fifth power or fifth root. Use the fifth root. Not F inverse, but H inverse. You could graph those two, the this function and then the original function. You'd see that they reflect across the y equals x line. A little tougher to see on this because they'll curve a little bit more, but it's still it's still pretty pretty legible to tell that. All right. All right. So assignment for today and tomorrow. Practice those. You got about thirty minutes left today, so. Um, should be time to get get pretty good ways into this. I know it's hot in here, guys. I'm just as uncomfortable as you are. All right, so three through thirty-five odd on the first section, section three, and then page 442, uh, three through 11 odd, and then 23 through 43 odd. Uh, get, get some practice with those. Um, Wednesday, no class. Uh, sophomores and juniors will be here to take ACT. Um, so we won't have class on Wednesday. Um, So we can either quiz tomorrow at the end of class or at the beginning of class Thursday. So I would I would think it'd be better to do it at the end of class tomorrow instead of Thursday because you're going to be out and most of you are probably going to be tired by the time you leave here from ACT on Wednesday. Um, and you'll, you'll probably not want to look at it again. Uh, Freshmen and, and and seniors are out. The rest of the county goes. Uh, uh, 